So we've got one, two, three, four methods here. Each take a parameter. Even though they all have the same num, uh, the same name, which is num, they're all not, they're all uh, local variables. They all only exist inside uh, their particular method areas, that code block. So that's a local variable that's used just here. So this num is a different one than this num. So when I call 12 over here and pass it there, not all of these are 12. And in, in fact, I this one does just hand off 12 over here. So, but the trick to this is to remember the whole lesson of this uh, do now is that if you hit a return, if this line runs return, sorry, I can't draw an arrow. Okay. If this line runs, return shuts everything down. And so once you run return, you don't run anything else. Return closes a method. So once a couple of things runs, it passes the number 12 up here and and num gets added to a bunch of stuff and a whole lot of stuff happens. But once we return the num, that passes back the, uh, the value back here. And so times two got called. So that got run. This got run. This was called and run. Square is called, but it's never actually executed because the return means this will be what's called an unreachable line of code. This 237 will never run. Thus, square and 239 and 240 will never run. So uh, I said give a, the line number of a method that never runs. 237, 239, and 240 are all legitimate answers. So, because because once you hit a return, nothing else happens in a method. That's important. Okay, so we just hit that uh, that lesson right there. So, um, okay, um, let's see. Okay, um, now let's see. Okay, so today, uh, let's first start by saying it's the start of a new week. Your grades have been updated. Make sure you check your grades to see how that looks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, if you have any, uh, if you see something wrong, remember it needs to be emailed me, emailed to me. Um, let's go over this week uh, plans. So we're working on our nav algorithm this week. We're starting a new unit, our last unit. Um, we have this week and two weeks following, and then we're done. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, uh, there's a project due uh, at the end of this week, so we want to make sure we get that in. Yeah, uh, it'll be up on your code. So uh, when I go over everyone's code, uh, it'll be there. Uh, I was fairly generous with my grading of your code this time around. I will be less so as our project, uh, as we move on to our next project. So um, yeah, oh, I'm just, if you're, if you notice that you're spending a lot of time waiting or relaxing in between things, that's probably a good indication that you might be missing a piece. Because um, there should be enough work to keep everyone engaged pretty consistently. Um, okay, now uh, we have a homework assignment, solo three. Um, that should be pretty obvious. There's a picture there about just get the next dot green. So um, cool. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, doing those homeworks, doing the solo three is going to make this whole class so much easier and more rewarding. So do take those homeworks seriously. Um, yeah, try not to skimp around that. Uh, all right, so let's talk about what obstacle avoidance is. 
and what our first uh, focus is. So I'll click on this and head on over to our unit this. All right. So uh, we can deploy apps on SSH. Yeah, we're already there. Um, okay, we can skip some of this. All right. Now, what we first need to do is we first need to review a little bit about what happens in a loop. I think we are a little bit vague on our understanding there, and I want to spend a few minutes tightening up what happens in a loop. Okay, so let's start by everyone. Let's go to trinket.io and let's practice with some loops. Real simple stuff, but we need to make sure that we're strong here. So we'll go to a new Python trinket. Okay, and so we'll go full screen. All right, so this is going to be loop practice. Okay, so um, for, let's say for X in range five, uh, five. Okay, real quick, uh, what, Brennan, what's going to be printed when I press play? X five times? What is going to ask? That's what, exactly what I'm getting at. What are we putting for X? Aha, uh -huh. okay, so this is great. This is great. This is exactly what what the heck is X going to be doing in this piece of code? This is really important. Uh, do you have an idea, Matthew? X is a variable. Right, so we've got to remember uh, range, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in a comment, range five outputs, just big arrow outputs you don't need to put this uh, copy this note down so we you should let's rewrite this into a literal list bracket zero one two three four uh three four that's the same thing as what we just wrote they're the same thing range five just produces that so if I did, if uh, my 4x in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the same thing. So x in this group, what that means when I say in, I say x, please go in this and pretend to be 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So I'm not, so I am printing X, but X will change values each time I loop. So what happens when I press play? Zero, one, two, three, four. So what am I printing? All the numbers. Am I printing X? Gunner, am I printing X? Am I printing X? Well, see, I mean, it's a little confusing. No, I'm not, I'm printing numbers, but that number is being represented by what's called an iterator. An iterator is the variable that goes through the collection. Vaughn, what do we call the variable that goes through the collection? Instance variable belongs inside a class, but way to drop a vocab word on me. It doesn't have anything to do with this, but nicely done. Yeah, 
iterator, iterator. When the iterator goes through a collection, we call that a traversal. That's when the iterator pretends to be each thing in a collection. All right, Vaughn, for the alley you. When a, something goes through each uh, thing in a collection, what do we call that? Or when the iterator goes through the whole collection? No. Okay, starts with a tree, a T, ends with a verse. Traverse, there we go, traverse. So, all right, these are two vocabulary words that Vaughn, it would make me feel so good if you just wrote down. Traverse is when an iterator loops through each item in a collection, all right? Traverse is when an iterator becomes each element in turn of a collection. So a loop is when an iterator traverses through each item in a collection. Traverses through is redundant. I don't, you, you wouldn't say traverse through. You just traverse. Traverse implies through. Mr. A is being repetitive in this sentence in order to help illustrate this word traverse. Typically, you wouldn't write traverse through each item in a collection. That's just silly because you would just cut this word. All right, but I'm, I'm being verbose in order to clarify. Uh, hopefully, that's my intent. Okay. Now, let's say, uh, let's build a list of names and let's build, uh, Matt, do you mind if I call you Matt and not Matthew? Okay, Brennan, Connor, Vaughn, Mason, Quinn, Lila, and Okay, these are the names of the kids in class. Sorry for leaving you out, Andrew and Justin, and watching this later on, Desiree. I'm like, just grab these names. Now, how would I set up a loop to traverse through all of these names? How would I loop through all of these names? If I wanted to print them all in separate lines, or maybe say, you know, each, say hi to each person in turn. No, hey, it's D, Y. Is it A, N? It's Hey, Dan. Hey, hey. A, J, yeah. A, N? No, A. No. A, N? No. There's no vowel? Oh, I guess Y is sometimes vowel. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Now, but notice X. X is not a very descriptive iterator. We can't just always use X as our iterator. It doesn't. It doesn't help new people that looking at this code understand what that iterator is. X makes sense in this context just because I'm going through random numbers and a random example, and it has no purpose. This is a collection of names. Each individual is a what? A singular. What's that? Well, well, this it, it will be, but what should I name the iterator as it's, what's that? 
each one is a variable, but I don't want to say like for var. I want a name that makes sense for these. What is what is an individual one of these things? Well, each individual Matt and Brennan and Gunner. What's that? Name makes sense. Or I could have called it student for name in names. You see what that does? It sets a singular to go through each one of the plural for name in names. Yeah. Okay. So print name plus space hello. All right, Brennan. Oh, wait. Maybe I should say hello plus the name. Yeah, that makes more sense. Hello, comma. There you go. So you see how I did the comma and space? That way, when I merge it with the name, it won't look so weird. Because we have to have that space there. So as I loop through each person, it will say that in turn for name in names. Okay, now let's run it. See this? Boom. Hello, Matt. Hello, Brennan. Hello. All right, we got everybody. So you see, this is a traversal. It goes through a collection. Now, here's where we flip it on their head and tie it back to our robots, okay? What if we wanted to use a loop to build a list? Instead of using this to go through a list, what if we went through uh, a traversal in order to build a list? Let me illustrate as best as I can using my annotation tools. Uh, heaven help us. Okay. Um, let's see. Dude, dude. All right. What is it? What is he doing? What is Mr. A doing? I don't know. I do not know. Okay. I got a square. I got something going on here. What is he drawing? Mm, da, 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 da. Okay. Now, do you figure? Can you figure out what I'm drawing now? No? Okay. Right. So, if my, this is my Raspberry Pi, this is my little neck here sticking out there all right i got a wheel over here i got a wheel over here so what i have indicated on this arc from 1000 to 2000 is the servo's view if i made it look at a self.server 1000 that's what it would get and so what if there was an obstacle uh, right over here. Let's say um, I'll use a different color and a different shape. Let's say I had something or other right here. If I looked dead center, I might miss it. You see, if I looked straight, then I might look right past it and say everything is safe for me to drive. So if I was looking at 1500, that would be a problem. So what I need to do is I need to scan the whole arc here. I need to scan this whole arc in order to see if there are anything, if there is anything in my way. That's our goal. Our goal is to move our head while we're driving and avoid bumping into things. And if I come up to us, uh, if I'm about to stop, I mean, if I'm about to hit anything, I stop. 
And then maybe I just turn until there isn't anything in the way. And then I keep driving. Just, that's what we're going to do when I press N. We've, we have been pressing the D button uh, when your robot loads. That's, been your, that's what we've been working on. Now, our job is for the next three weeks is to make an increasingly intelligent N button. The first thing that we're going to do is just not drive full speed into things. That's our first goal. Don't bump into stuff. Then we're going to, next week, we'll, we'll start thinking about, okay, what's the smarter decision? Instead of always just turning the same direction, I think we're just gonna turn right because it's easy. Uh, we're just going to keep on turning right or turning one direction. We're going to layer in some intelligence into this, maybe some, some smart moves. Uh, but right now, do at the end of this week, your robot will press the end button, press enter, and it will navigate and not bump into things. Sort of. It might, it might clip some stuff, and that's not a big deal. But as long as it avoids head-on major collisions, that's what we're trying to do. The way we're going to do that, our first move today, is going to be a servo sweep. First, we are going to scan. We're going to look this way. And then we're going to look this way, and then this way. We're going to do checks all along. We'll move the head, and then when we get to one where it's a problem, then we will know that there's an obstacle right here. It will say, okay, this is clear, this is clear, this is clear, this is clear, this is clear. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. There's not, there's something there. And so at first, we might just stop and turn until we don't see uh, some evil box in our way. But later, we will we'll say, oh, I still want to drive around this. I'm just going to turn a tiny bit. I know I can still see this thing. It's OK if it's out of the way, as long as I won't bump into right along here. So maybe I'll just turn it enough so that I won't hit this box and keep and drive around it. That's that'll come in later weeks. Right now, we'll just turn and turn and turn until the general arc of what's in front of it from 1000 to 2000 is largely clear. All right. Let's talk a little bit about how this is going to work. We we've, we've reviewed some of our loops and what I want to show you is uh, actually, before I clear this away, I just want to show you, look what would happen in this example piece of code. For angle, in, I'm just going to say ang, it's easier to say. For angle in range 1,000 to 2,000, count up by, let's say, 100. Now, self.servo, self is not going to work. This code it doesn't work because I'm not inside my robot code. It doesn't know what self is. But let's just look at this example and say self.servo angle. What's going to happen here? If I did this piece of code, what will happen? Some of you did something similar in your dance with the sprinkler. Yeah. Boom, that's right, by how big are the increments? 100, that's right. So Gunner nailed it. We're gonna start at a 1,000, looking uh, to our right, and then we're going to go slowly over to 2,000, counting by 100. So that should be you know, about 10. It'll actually be about nine because, not about nine, it'll be exactly nine, because this second number is non-inclusive. It won't go, it won't include 2,000. So the last one will be 1900 and then it'll stop before if I did this, then it would include 2000. Um, just a funny way. The second number says, don't hit this number. Stop before it. This one is inclusive. It says start here, use this number, but stop before you hit this number. Uh, that's a, all programming languages 
largely have a non-inclusive second parameter. I'll, that's confusing. It doesn't matter. So I'm starting at 2000 and I'm going to go all the way over to, I'm mean, starting, I'm sorry, starting at 1000. I will go all the way over and include 2000 because I just did that. And I will count by a hundred. This is 10 different scans. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Each time it will move to that. And then I'll give it a time dot sleep for such a tiny bit, maybe a 10th of a second, just to make sure that the head is in place and it's not moving. When I do a self dot distance, I believe is the name of the method, then uh, I can say something if, if self dot distance is less than 300 millimeters, then, you know, uh, stop or do something, um, return false or, uh, false or, you know, self dot stop. I, it doesn't matter. My point is I can move my head all along this range, stopping for a 10th of a second in between, and then taking a distance measurement using my eyeballs, uh, those, those things on the robots aren't actually cameras or eyes, they're distance sensors. And so each time along the way, I will see if there's the thing that is in front of me is closer than 3000. If so, then I will either say, no, it's not safe if this is a helper method, or if I'm driving at the moment, I'll slam on the brakes before I hit it. It doesn't, it, one of these options. Okay. There is one more thing I can do. Is, uh, actually it's on the, all right. It's in the Git book here. You see where, how many obstacles does this robot see? If I did, if I took 20 measurements, Let's say if I was counting not by a hundred, but by 50, I would have gotten this measurement. If I did, uh, let's say I built a line of code that did something like, um, let's say here, if I did um, for, for angle in range uh, 1000 to 2001, counting by 50, and then uh, and then each one I did self dot servo to that angle, and then I did uh, scan at angle. I built a list, which is just this thing, is equal to self dot distance. So what I'm doing here is I'm just built a method that that assembled this list. How many obstacles do you see? If I scanned this list of distances, what do I get? So uh, let's try first by saying um, here is where what direction am I looking at? right here for this first one at, where did I start? I, I started at angle 1000. So that means I'm looking far right and I'm counting up by 50. So as I'm going further to the right here, my head is actually going further to the left. So as, as this goes uh, for, to the right, my robot is looking further to the left. So I can see right away, see if you guys can uh, spot this too, that there's a group of small numbers here and another group of small numbers here. So this tells me there are two boxes right in front of my robot, like several millimeters away, just really, really, like, almost two millimeter, that's right up in its face. So if, if I'm scanning and I'm seeing big distance, big distance, and then as my head keeps on moving, 
I see something three, two, and then seven meters millimeters away. Uh, that's really up in my face. And, uh, and then as I keep on scanning, then I see another one really close, up close, up close, and then a little further away. So what I'm seeing, I mean, does that, any of that, uh, can you visualize what, what the robot's doing there? Um, so as I'm scanning over here, so I'm seeing these three scans, and then I get big distance as the robot's moving its head and scanning. I'm seeing big distances, and then I see another one as it's getting over here. It's up in its face, and then again, big distances away. So the scans that have big numbers means that the distance is far away. The scans that have short numbers and are stopping right here are because something is in its face. And then when I get big numbers again, I'm seeing <coughs> uh, open space in between. And then small numbers when I see another thing. And then big numbers when it goes bad. Does that make sense? Mason, can you summarize for me, please? How is it sometimes the numbers are small and sometimes the numbers are big? My, what's happening to change the numbers? Does that mean this, the object is moving? Well, I, I did not <clears throat> apply any power to my, uh, to my wheels. What about the robot is moving? <laughs> there is something moving on the robot to get these different numbers. Right, the head is turning. So as the head turns, I'm seeing different readings in front of it. So we should, next week you will have a challenge to count the number of obstacles. We won't do that this week, but next week you will have a sort of test. I will put down boxes in front of your robot and it will need to tell how many boxes are in front of it. And if it gets it wrong, then you fail. No, you'll get another try, but, uh, you'll that'll be the challenge for next week this week we just don't bump into stuff as much as we can all right so let's get let's get moving i have lectured long enough i want to hit more on these concepts but i can't do it all at once that's a little overwhelming but i think we got a couple cool concepts in place now let's uh now let's get into it uh, let me do a quick time check see if it's worth battering up our robots or sticking all to code today. 55, 25 minutes. Yeah, maybe it's a little too close to, to try to get these up and running. Let's just build some cool stuff in code to get us ready for next time. Uh, and then we'll do all day tomorrow, playing around with this stuff. Okay, so let's first look at our code and see what we've got here. Um, yeah, we're all done with Trinket here. Now let's open up Visual Studio Code. Let's get this stuff in place. We're not using dance anymore. I don't care about example moves. Everything now is at the nav. So this is our big nav. So find the big nav method. Well, your lines are going to be much, much different than mine. It should be like right before the main app, like should be pretty far down. Yeah, it's called nav, N-A-V for navigation. Just double click on the student. Oh, it doesn't look like you have the project open. So go to file. Okay. 
All right. Cool. All right. Right. Um, Okay, so um, after this nav, let's put in a doc string comment. This this method doesn't have one, and every method should have a doc string comment. So that means a triple double quote, 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 quote. There you go, triple double, double. All right, uh, I'm using the phrase triple double that has significance in sports world this uh what does triple double mean it's basketball what does it mean double digits yeah double digits or 10 or more in what are the three metrics the triple assists rebounds and points yeah See, hey, Mr. A knows something about sports. Wait, are you asking about triple double? Yeah. Yeah. So I use the phrase triple double quotes, and that's a coin that was first coined about basketball and triple double, meaning that your assists and rebounds, as well as points, means that you're more a rounded player. That's good. Okay. So uh, triple double quotes, and that's a doc string comment. And now, What's a good comment for our navigation? Um, autopilot. The autopilot program, all right? So now, because I put the triple double quotes underneath, and my computer also knows how to understand Python, yours might not have Python installed. You can always go to python.org and install it if you really wanted to. But now that I can hover over nav, it'll teach, it'll remember this quote. That's why we do those. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we have an autopilot program, and then it prints out a bunch of messages uh, when it gets started. Okay. Now, what happens here? While self dot read distance is greater than 250. Forward sleep stop what's what's happening okay right so if my self my, my this robot's distance reading is greater than 250 so this is a while loop different than the for loop we are just lo looking at so as long as the scanner on, uh, in front of me is greater than 250, then we go forward. And why do I have a sleep in here? Yeah? I want what I'm doing here is giving it a slight because forward none of this stuff takes any time this will spam so so fast it will you know millions of times it will ask the robot to to check the distance in front of it there is almost no time in between it doing the distance saying keep the power going and then checking again i I don't want to overwork its eyes, its distance reading. I give a slight pause just to slow things down a bit 
so I don't keep you know checking the distance again and again and again and again. Okay. And so think about this. This is a problem. I've got an issue here. Look at what my robot's going to do. Uh, let's say here. Um, I am going to draw another robot. Mr. A is really digging this annotation tool. All right. So now, if I've got a robot here, and let's just imagine my, my head is actually sideways. Uh, our robot can't really turn this dramatically. But let's just imagine I was looking straight left. Let's say I was at 2000, and I was looking all the way left while driving forward. So I was driving forward, but looking left, then um, what would be the problem here? Gunner is on fire today. Come on. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for distance while, while my going left. It's like all of you guys walking around with your cell phones. You're not... You're doing distance checks in the wrong direction. So uh, if I'm looking to the left while driving forward, uh, then my distance checks are not going to mean very much because I'm looking in the wrong way. So one thing that we should do before we start this navigation algorithm is also make sure that I'm looking forward, that I'm looking dead center. But all of our dead centers are a little different. So let's talk a little bit about uh, where, where our dead centers are being tracked. So let's scroll up for a second. We'll come right back to this. And you see magic numbers are listed up here. We need uh, tomorrow to check our midpoint, self that midpoint. Right now for everyone is 1500. But you might notice to look dead center, your robot needs a different number. We're going to change that up here. We also need to know what is it safe? What's a safe distance? When do I when do I think something is too close that I need to stop? So let's all add something underneath here. After left default and right default, we're going to go self dot safe distance. Let's start it at 300. All we're up on line like 22. And we're, we all just added this in. And then self dot close distance. See how I'm doing it all in caps? That, when you write something all in caps, that's called a constant. It's a variable that's not intended to change at all. Those are what are called magic numbers. By creating, by creating a variable for midpoint, if I, I can use that all around my app. I can say, hey, look, self.servo, where do I go? Self dot midpoint. Now I can, I can turn to the midpoint any place in my app. And if I dropped it on someone else's code, they would change their midpoint, their, someone else's robot. Let's say someone else had a, a robot with a funky neck and it was off at an a, a weird angle. And like 1700 was that robot's midpoint. They would change this one place at the top of the code to adjust to their physical robot, just change that one number. And then everywhere else in the code, wherever I use self.midpoint, it would always refer to the same fixed uh, location. That really helps. And so that's where we hard code in our settings. And then everywhere else we reference self.midpoint. And if we need to change it, we only have to change it in one place. 
rather than go through our code as Mr. A has done many other apps before I learned this very smart practice that if you have, if you want to drive up closer to the stuff, you know, everyone knows Mason is the bad boy of robotics. You know, he doesn't care. He plays it on the edge. So maybe he wants to get, you know, maybe he wants to get danger close to everything. He's going to get real close to his stuff. Uh, so his close distance, he wants to build a navigation algorithm that that robot goes full power up until two centimeters away and then slams his brakes and then turns. Maybe other people find that having a larger distance is helpful. I stop early and start looking for options sooner rather than drive up and get myself into a corner. I don't know the right answer. I've had students figure things out in different ways, but changing these numbers up here, what is a safe distance to stop? What is, how close can I get? All of these things can be tinkered with and it will help you if you have the numbers stored somewhere, uh, you know, easy to get to at the top of the file and then you can always refer back to self.this and self.that. And if you change it, you change it one place up top here and everything else follows suit. All right. Um, so tomorrow we are going to run some calibrations. If your robot is tries to drive straight, has anyone noticed if your robot drives straight, does it veer slowly to one angle or another? Okay, we're going to test that tomorrow. We should be able to drive our robot straight and it shouldn't end up turning one way or another. If so, if it started, sort of veers off to the right, that means the, the motor on the opposite side, the left one, is maybe a little bit too strong. It's overpowering the one on the other side and it's driving it off. So we can tinker with the, the basic power so that it sort of gets as straight as possible. These robots are not super high performance machines. Uh, it's not a Tesla we're, we're building here. So the, if it veers off to the side that, you know, we'll fix it as much as we can. Same thing with our midpoint. It won't be perfectly straight, but we'll get pretty darn close. So uh, calibrating the robot is the first thing that we'll do tomorrow. And then after we calibrate it, We'll work inside of our dance method here, uh, not sorry, dance method. We'll work inside our nav method here to make sure that we're looking straight when we first start our app. And then we will make it so that we start checking while we drive. Instead of just always looking, keeping our head still, we want to bob our head around a little bit. Uh, and then we'll also start doing thorough bigger scans. All right. That's what we'll do next time. We have 10 minutes until that uh, happens. If, uh, if you want, now's a good time to get moving on your homework. I don't want to lecture anymore and we don't have the time to get our robots out. So let's get started on some homework. Meanwhile, I'll have any questions. Yes, you may.